Today on Great Places Seen, I descend millions of years back into time to bridge the past in search of waterfalls and streams that have slowly and intricately carved rock and massive caves that have served as homes. Plenty of current residents are here in this Ohio gem. It's not scary down there. Come along for the ride and let's step in. I feel perhaps I should be playing Morning is Broken by Cat Stevens, but well, that would be a copyright strike against me, so feel free to play that one on your own. Another U Camp is in the books. It's Saturday. A lot of campers have already left and uh, gone on to their next destinations or gone back home. I'm staying in the campground for another day and uh, going to get some chores done in the trailer. And then tomorrow morning, it's off to a new destination. I'm flushing tanks and taking the day to sanitize my system. It takes very little bleach to do that. My intake hose holds a quarter cup, so if I carefully fill it, I can get some bleach in and run all the faucets to pull it through the line so it can sit for a few hours. Well, I started uh, just a little after nine, so I guess I'll flush my tanks a little after five. Give it about eight hours to sanitize. I need to get some food into my lines. Finally, time for a little breakfast. <laughs> it's a beautiful weekend day as many U Camp campers are taking advantage of prime travel weather. I have an easy day to take care of a few things before I relax under the quiet, dark, starry skies. It's just a beautiful day today to travel. I'll take my time and get underway after lunch. I don't have a long drive today. I'm fully drying out the trailer cover, vacuuming the rear bin where it's kept, and replacing the Keter rail insert I took out because ants got in there last year. I heard people throw these away. I like how it looks in the rail. Stabilizers up, hitched, and heading to Hocking Hill State Park, considered one of the top state parks in the United States, and easy to reach from three interstate highways in Ohio that go through or near Columbus all leading to well-maintained U.S. routes and state roads. So that's what I'll be doing, maybe three or four hours heading south. I did have a slight mishap leaving my site. Somehow I clipped the edge of the fire ring and, shall we say, partially uninstalled the right wheel cover on the trailer. I only needed a couple of minutes to screw it back into place. It doesn't appear anything else is amiss as I passed the new camp factory one last time. I'll check again here at the gas station. Hey, I'm already pulling a tab. Overall, it doesn't appear bad. You can see the cover isn't flush with the side. However, only three or four screws in the back are affected. The 
front is tight, nothing's moving. So let's see how it does with the highway airflow. I clipped that firing pretty well, <laughs> but uh, it just looks like the plastic fender is all that uh, came off and uh, it feels tight even though it's a little loose toward the rear. Uh, I could probably really lock it down with a good zip tie uh, in the interim. Uh, so far it feels like everything is rolling fine. It doesn't appear that I did anything to the tire, or, thankfully. So uh, rolling along on I-77 at highway speed and uh, everything feels nice and smooth. So let's continue. It's a very warm travel day today, uh, upper 80s, almost 90, and it's going to be very warm for the rest of the trip, so I'm taking it easy. I'm watching uh, my stats on my dashboard, uh, making sure that the car doesn't get too hot. Uh, it seems to be pulling just fine, uh, but nonetheless, I'm going to be cautious. I, need to put down a, a lot of miles between here and home so better uh, safe than sorry I guess about 65 is my top speed and that seems to work well I'm a newcomer to this town I have three options ahead of me in past years, I've taken the other two, so let's go west today. U.S. Route 22 West is what I want, but here it shares part of the way with U.S. Route 40, which is known as the National Highway. Like Route 66, some also call 40 the Main Street of America. One of the first U.S. highways created in 1926, Route 40 once traversed the entire United States. Interstate 80 later truncated Route 40 past Salt Lake City, Utah. The eastern terminus remains Atlantic City, New Jersey. Route 40 was built on top of several other older highways, including the National Road and Victory Highway, which commemorated World War I veterans. The National Road was created in 1806 by Congress as the first federally funded highway project. U.S. Route 40's history goes back several centuries to well-established Native American footpaths. Zanesville, Ohio is where Route 22 breaks away and heads south to Cincinnati. I'm only going as far as Route 33 to take me the rest of the way. I used to pass cemeteries without as much as a glance. Now, everyone I see tugs at me a little bit. First impressions, it's a very nice campground. It's very compact and a lot of the campsites are on top of each other. But that said, being in the middle of the summer and being a full campground, uh, it's been fairly quiet this evening. I got in about 6.30, uh, all set up now. It's uh, almost seven o'clock and uh, I'm gonna see if the visitor center might still be open. Let's check it out. A lot of people are still here in the park late. By the way, no entrance fee. And yes, the visitor center is closed. But the trails are open. And I have plenty of light for a while to have at least a good first look and get a sense of where everything is.
The water is clearly down, it's flowing, and it's amazing how much evening light reaches into the gorge. The cover of the visitor guide, of course, shows more free-flowing falls, and on the back it's clear water builds over the winter as it freezes. Still, it's a respectable waterfall as I first enter the trail. The dark rock shows how much larger the falls can be. I'm going to cruise along the rim trail to the A-frame bridge. An historic cabin. a small area where a lot of activity is still taking place. There's plenty of seed for everyone. No fighting for room at these feeders. Some would like to have better access if they could. I'll have a full day tomorrow to see much more. There's no clear view of a sunset, so I'll enjoy the fading light coming through the trees. Stargazer window? How about Moongazer window? I fell asleep with the shade partially open. The morning light has me awake early. Well, that's good, as there are seven separate hiking areas. Good morning. I'm going to take an early hike down to Old Man's Cave and uh, maybe beat the crowds. It's about 7.30 in the morning. Sun is up. It's going to be a hot day. 
already in the uh, mid 70s at this hour clear skies so we'll try to beat the heat and the crowd it's a little bit of a steep and rooted trail going down to the gorge from the campground It's Monday morning, uh, but it's the middle of summer now, and uh, the campground is mostly full. Some people are pulling out, but I do expect uh, uh, to see a fair number of people out here at uh, some of the more popular locations. So hopefully this early start will uh, give me a little bit of space to see things better if I don't trip. I've seen several of these markers. I'm not quite sure what the numbers mean, but they obviously designate where I am on the trail, what trail I'm on. I've had the good fortune to meet a lot of people on this trip uh, at U Camp. A lot of people who have had the same, or not same, but similar experience uh, as I've had losing a spouse. And it's interesting to hear the different uh, perspectives on grief, on coping with such a traumatic loss. Some had gone through it very recently, some have uh, been many years removed, but still, uh, of course, there's always that void that exists uh, in the last three months. It does become uh, difficult uh, at points in the day, not all day, but uh, there are those moments and uh, those are the difficult moments that you have to work through and the times that are helped by just getting out there. I mean, one more than one person said, oh, you're very brave to be out here uh, this soon. I don't know that that's bravery. Uh, that's more forcing myself to uh, kind of rip the band-aid off, so to speak. It stings, but you know in the long run you can understand it and put it in perspective better. Uh, but it's been a good trip, and, uh, and I thank everybody who has posted condolences too. That has been extremely helpful. Thank you. This is the Gorge Rim Trail. As the morning light begins to filter through the trees, another old forest, and you can tell because there's very little undergrowth. All the big trees shade out the floor of the forest, and you can see through much of the forest as you walk along. Well, that was a pretty quick walk from the campground. I'm already, I can see the gorge uh, down below me. And, a few early risers I hear down there. Uh, I didn't realize when I booked this how popular Hocking Hills is and how well known it is. Uh, some of my friends said that their overseas friends raved about it and they hadn't heard about it. But apparently it is one of the top uh, state parks in the country. And uh, certainly what I've seen so far uh, has proven that to be true. It is quite spectacular. Just a trickle in the upper falls. The visitor center still closed at this hour. I'm heading down into and along the gorge toward the famous Old Man's Cave. 
really have to watch your step through here. <laughs> Gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Everywhere is rock sculpted by water. This was relatively flat only 330 million years ago, and hard to believe this was all once under the Atlantic Ocean, where for millions of years, currents deposited immense amounts of sand and gravel. A few more million years, the ocean receded, and all those sandy layers bonded with silica to form the underlying black hand sandstone. It was like a sandwich, hard top and bottom, with a soft middle layer. As the Appalachian Mountains rose, this area began to take some shape. I think I've succeeded in beating the crowds. This is a cool little bridge. Back to our history lesson. For millions more years, this area sat between two rivers, one of which we know as the Hawking River. About 10 to 15,000 years ago is when dramatic changes took place. The Wisconsin Glacier was retreating to the north. It stalled in northern Hawking County. And what resulted was unimaginable flooding, perhaps as we might say, of biblical proportions. One river was completely filled in by glacial silt. The northern flowing Hawking River reversed course. As torrents of water found cracks in the hard top rock layer, the softer middle layer was washed out. Created were dimples, wrinkles, mini caves, or grottos that we see today. Parts of the hard top layer fell, which are the huge so-called slump rocks that we have to climb over or walk around in the gorge. Early settlers found an ancient black hand print on a cliff, and the name for this type of rock, black hand sandstone, stuck. In 1924, Ohio bought the first parcel of land that is now Hawking Hill State Park, created to preserve this remarkable place. There you have it, no quiz at the end. I'm closing in on Old Man's Cave. I am really struggling to capture a sense of depth here. It's very difficult with the camera to duplicate what I'm actually seeing. That was not the cave.
These trees have entwined huge roots around the rocks and have somehow still managed to get well under them to tap the soil and water. The scenery is absolutely stunning. You could easily hang out here all day. Or for a few, perhaps even live here. The Sphinx head does resemble the ancient Egyptian structure, although this one is much older. The name Old Man's Cave is much more recent. Richard Rowe was an avid outdoorsman who occupied the cave in the late 1700s. One winter day, he climbed down for water and used the butt of his musket to break the ice. His firearm went off, mortally wounding him. A passing trading partner later found Roe and buried him in the floor of the cave. Richard Retzler was also a trapper in the area who made this and other caves his home. A veteran of the War of 1812, Retzler left to visit his family. He learned his brother had died and said he had buried money in the cave which he would give to help the family. He went to the cave to retrieve the money, broke ice with his gun, and was killed. A passerby found him and buried Retzler in the cave. Sound familiar? There is question as to whether these two stories are actually about the same person. But wait, there's more! Two brothers, Nathaniel and Pat Rayan, lived in the cave about the same time as Roe. They enjoyed it so much, they asked to one day be buried in the cave. The landowners agreed. Human bones were indeed unearthed and relocated, however there is no clear answer as to their identity. And so, the legend of Old Man's Cave is what now lives on. At the moment, I'm the only old man in this cave.
Well, it's no wonder the trail got busy. It's it's already 9.30. <laughs> I've been out here two hours. So I think I'm gonna hike back out, get a little bit of breakfast, and then explore some more. I'm simply backtracking across the A-frame bridge along the rim trail. I'm now looking down on the cave. The morning light illuminates many interesting things. Water flow under the trail. In the time that I was gone, so are my neighbors. They have left. Oof. It's one of those days that really hits you in the face when you come out the door. It feels like an oven out here. Wow. Even with tinted glass and the windows cracked, I am sure it is roasting inside. Oh, it is nice and quiet now that the neighbors have left. I have uh, two spaces on either side that are empty, so I'm in a good spot right now. Many people at the U Camp Rally told me that uh, they come to Hocking Hills, especially the folks from Michigan. A couple of them said they weren't really fond of the campground. Uh, it is a little tight in here. All of the uh, pads, though, are paved, even though the pads are a little bit uneven. But I can imagine at times it can be a little boisterous in here. At the moment, it's really nice. Thankfully, my AC is running very well on this exceptionally hot day. I'm using my new waste valve. Oh yeah, it's really warm out here today. This kind of a day does appear to be the perfect setup for some thunderstorms later. We'll see. This is actually a uh, camp host site. I'm not a host, but I was able to get my reservation switched thanks to the nice people at the check-in station. Uh, I was in three nights in three different spaces because this is a hot ticket to get, although you wouldn't know it at the moment. Uh, but they found this space from a cancellation and here I am for three straight nights in the same spot, which makes it uh, a lot nicer for sure. Thank you folks at Hocking Hills for making that happen. Now the camera's been sitting out here for a little bit. It's really hot too. My goodness. Well, the plan certainly is not to be staying inside all day. Hocking Hills is an amazingly scenic area. Uh, had a nice morning hike and I'm going to be heading out in just a little bit to see what else we can find. Twice now, my circuit breaker has gone off. And I'm not running much other than the AC and a light and a USB fan. It definitely feels cooler in the back. I took a short nap, just lay down for a little bit and uh, quite comfortable. Uh, you can see it's almost 90 degrees outside and uh, even though the front thermometer is hot, well that's where the sun is hitting the trailer right now and I do feel the heat more in the front than I do in the back. I mean the AC is doing an admirable job of keeping up. This is venting out the air that's really hot at the top of the trailer. 
bathroom really is a little heat sink. It's warm in there if you don't keep the door open. And the little exhaust fan is doing okay pulling that out. I also have a pair of USB fans that are circulating the cool air well. Well, I've learned even being on 30 amp service, I can't run everything at once, so... I have to turn the air conditioner off to use the microwave. I've also made it a habit to unplug my appliances after using them. I don't leave anything plugged in. In just that short time to make breakfast, I gave up five degrees inside. It is oppressively hot out. Well, certainly no worries about a warm breakfast getting cold. And the temperature keeps going up. I felt the indoor sensor wasn't uh, doing this justice. I put it by the vent. That's a little extreme. Uh, it's actually probably quite nice in here, like mid-70s. But contrast that to what it is outside. Yeah, that's why I'm doing a little work inside for the moment. Well, one of my simplest and favorite lunches is just having a sandwich. Whether it's uh, turkey or chicken. The Swiss Village bulk food store was giving away free Colby cheese. It's very good. Actually, I actually had two coupons, so I have a half pound of it. And then usually some turkey breast, although I got some uh, chicken. Also, while I was in Sugar Creek, Ohio. And that's my sandwich. They had a lot of dried fruit there. I got some raisins and dried bananas. Great snacks. The indoor sensor is going up again a little bit, but it's by the front window and where the sun is heating the front of the trailer. Off to locations farther from camp. Lots of signage with detailed history of this area. And a few warnings. Definitely not today. This definitely looks like the handiwork of the Civilian Conservation Corps. The CCC was a huge effort to help unemployed young men and their families during the Great Depression in the 1930s. Their work created thousands of park structures still in use nearly a century later. The Cedar Fall trails may be short, but not fast. It takes time to go up and down stairs, around rocks, and of course, stopping to look at what's here. Again, it's all carved by water. Use your imagination. Insert falls here. Little caves and tall trees everywhere. These formations all beginning to look familiar now, and the sign illustrates the soft middle rock layer that has been washed out. 
In January 1998, a massive flood destroyed virtually all park structures in this gorge. This bridge was rebuilt using the bent steel girders as a reminder of the powerful forces that carved the gorge. I can see above me there are storm clouds and I can hear the rumble of thunder in the distance. My weather app won't work here, so I need to get moving back to the car. Not much flowing below, but soon from above. Cedar Falls is on the path to the car, so I'll fit in as much as I can. Too bad we don't have a multi-million year old time lapse of this being created. That would be fun. Here's a snapping turtle enjoying a lazy afternoon. And a friend. Is this their home? Here are the falls, such as they are in the middle of summer. Where there's water, there's wildlife. Watch out for your neighbor over there. <laughs> okay, the obligatory slow motion. Even the trail back is very scenic. It has become very dark. The wind has picked up. And I think a storm is about to open up here. Wow, look at this trail back to the parking area. <laughs> Isn't this cool? Japanese artist Akio Hizumi created these stairs in 1997 using the mathematical Fibonacci sequence to help alternate the lead foot on each step, creating what he says is a more enjoyable experience. Well, it doesn't negate the fact I'm climbing up a steep hill. Okay, I am on the democracy steps. 
it was named Democracy Steps because of greater access to the falls, thereby allowing more people to enjoy them. Almost five o'clock now in the evening and you can see it looks as if it's nine o'clock in the summertime. It's become very dark here. I think I'm at the parking lot at just about the right time. Still a lot of people down there by the falls. <laughs> That's what's coming. Back to the car just in time. I've driven a short way to Ash Cave. Although heavy, the rain was also short. Here's a tip. The sign says straight ahead, but there's a new parking entrance not marked on the left. Another sign points to the right, but it's the old parking area, which is now a large pedestrian crossing. The changes have adapted this trail for the physically challenged. I'm showing GPS coordinates for the new parking entrance. One advantage to coming out here now, there'll be few people out here. The path is concrete for easy access with many benches along a short one-third mile distance to a viewing area almost inside the cave. For perspective, I'll zoom in on these visitors so you can get a sense of size. The sand underneath is like a massive beach. Absolutely massive in here. You could have a whole village living in this space. In fact, American Indians used Ash Cave for centuries. Evidence of campfires that accumulated for hundreds of years have been found. Like a concert hall, the sound reverberates through the cave from the other side. Did somebody lose their hat or did it fall from above? Water carved these indentations. Later, people added some more. J.S. No, I didn't put that one there.
The waterfall isn't as robust as in the early spring, but still descending from the same impressive height. has been correctly identified as a rock, actually part of the old stairs that have broken. Now replaced with a wooden walkway. My return trip will be on the rim trail. Like elsewhere in the park, they want you to go one way. And that's what's flowing over the edge of the cave. I'm high up on a ridge now, so I presume this trail goes back down. Slowly making my way down, there's one of the bridges I crossed on the way to the cave. Rock outcroppings everywhere. I'm coming down to meet the other trail now. I see it down there. Well, I'd say this was worth waiting the rain out. Really cool, Ash Cave. Time to cross the street again. Clearing up nicely, but very humid after this hot day. Look at all the steam coming off of the road. It was so hot today. The car thermometer says 73 degrees outside now. It's on the map. It's on the sign. Well, might as well check it out while I'm here. It is a fire tower as advertised. Lots of history here. You can scan the QR code for more if you like. If you wanted to know how tall 80 feet is, there you go. Well, these footings were put in in 1934, as was the rest of the tower. It gets hit by lightning? Yes, it is grounded. I'm the only one here, so five more can join me. Always comforting when you see a new step has been added. That's as high as I can go. I can't get up to the top platform. 
but I can still see a lot from here. You can see all the mist rising after the rain showers. Nothing attracts company like seeing a car in the parking lot. I just heard somebody pull in. That's the water tower at the campground. Not smoke from fire. Mist from a rainstorm after a very hot day. Some of these trees are extremely tall. If I'm just below 80 feet, well, you know, these trees are pushing 70, 75 feet. With company coming up, I think I'll head down. Back on terra firma. Storm cooled things down quite a bit, but that humidity is way up. Backlit sunset shadows on condensation end the day and this video. More from Hocking Hills next time. Thanks for watching.